Hello everyone, my name is Mrs. Hill and I'm going to talk to you today about molar mass. Alright, well by the end of this lesson you should be able to describe a mole, explain how to find the molar mass of an element, and you should be able to calculate the molar mass of a compound. So let's get started. First of all, what is a mole? Well, a mole in chemistry is not what you would traditionally think of as a mole. Um, sometimes re we refer to moles as little pos little uh, marks on the skin. Um, or it can also be a little little creature that digs in the ground. Neither of these is what a mole is when we're talking about chemistry. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with a dozen. So whenever you talk about a dozen, you know that that means that there is 12 of something. It doesn't matter if it's donuts or if it's roses or if it's eggs. A dozen is always equal to 12. Well, a mole in chemistry is um, based on Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So anytime you have a mole of something, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so that's a pretty big number, but how big is it really? Well, if we had a mole of hockey pucks, it would equal the mass of the moon. If we had a mole of basketballs, we could fill a bag of basketballs the size of the earth. If we had a mole of pennies, it would cover the earth one quarter mile deep. So you can see a mole is a very large number. But in chemistry, we're talking about very small things like atoms. So we need a very large number to quantify atoms. All right, so in chemistry, we deal a lot with what's known as molar mass. So molar mass is how much one mole of any atom weighs in grams. So basically, gold. If I had one mole of gold, it would weigh 196.97 grams. 196.97 is the molar mass of gold. OK, so different elements have different molar masses. Remember that every atom has a different number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So it makes sense that they would all have different molar masses. For example, hydrogen has one proton, one electron. It has a different molar mass than beryllium, which has four protons, four neutrons, five neutrons, excuse me, and four electrons. So how do you find the molar mass of any element? Well, this is very easy. What you do is you look at the periodic table. On the periodic table, there's a couple of things. Of course, the name of the element, the symbol, its atomic number, which is how many protons. But more importantly, down here, we have a decimal. The decimal is always the molar mass of the element. For example, beryllium. Beryllium has a molar mass of 9.0122. Remember that that is how much one mole of beryllium atom weighs in grams. So if I was to scoop up a mole of beryllium atoms, it would weigh 9.0122 grams. <clears throat> now, why is that a decimal? Well, if you'll recall from previous things that you've learned, atoms have isotopes. Remember that isotopes are atoms that have different numbers of neutrons. So this is just an average. So sometimes you'll see this referred to as average molar mass or average atomic mass. All right, so that was pretty easy to do. It's really very, very simple to find the molar mass of an element. But what about a compound? You find the molar mass of a compound by adding up all the molar masses of each atom in the compound. So in that case, you need to know the chemical formula for the compound. An example is, what is the molar mass of CCl4? Another name for this is carbon tetrachloride. So you can see, according to its chemi chemical formula, this compound contains one carbon and four chlorine atoms. So I'm going to look at my periodic table. I see that carbon weighs 12.011 grams per mole. Chlorine weighs 35.453 grams per mole. So remember, the way that you find the molar mass of the compound is to add up the molar masses of each type of atom. We have one carbon in here, according to the chemical formula, and four chlorine. So I'm going to add the carbon, which is 12.0111, plus the four chlorine. 
So basically, I take 4 and I multiply it times the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.45. I add it to the molar mass of carbon, and I get 153.81 grams per mole. Okay, let's do a little bit more, a uh, little more practice. What is the molar mass of the following? Aluminum and carbon dioxide. Aluminum, simple. Remember that we find it, but just by looking at the periodic table. So we find aluminum on the periodic table. It has a molar mass of 26.982. Simple. Okay, for carbon dioxide, we have to do a little bit more work. Remember that we have to add up the molar mass of each atom in the compound. The chemical formula for carbon dioxide is CO2. That means I have one carbon and two oxygen atoms. If I look at the periodic table, I see that carbon weighs 12.011, oxygen weighs 15.999, and I have two oxygens. And I could have done it like I did on the other one. I could have just multiplied 15.99 times 2, or I can just add it in there twice. Either way, I get a total mass of 44.009 grams. All right, well, this completes this lesson on molar mass. If you have any questions or you would like more information or practice, please feel free to visit any of the websites linked below. Thank you. Have a great day.